Simmer contacted me this summer to be involved in the Simmer Boards project. And while I had a lot of initial questions, probably the thing I was most curious about is who the shaper was. That turned out to be Ula Hellenius, who had previously shaped for Starboard and has 20 years of experience developing the fundamentals of what makes a waveboard work. When I met Ula, I was right away really impressed with his ability to turn numbers and basic diagrams into real life products. A board doesn't just exist in your mind. You have to turn it into numbers and figures and actual mathematical equations. So it doesn't hurt that Ula has a PhD in mathematics to go along with his very creative shaping ideas. Something that has been really exciting with this project is working with, uh, with Kai. Because unlike some riders, Kai, he has a solid background from riding California, riding Maui, riding Cabo Verde, and also riding Europe, even freestyle waveboards, you know, the, the summers he spends in Europe. So, uh, and this fits perfectly with, with my ideas, that I like to be able to develop good boards that are all around, work super well over a wide range of conditions, but still have a different character to them. And this is something Kai has helped me with, uh, to, uh, to not be so... Uh, focused on what he only wants for himself, but to be able to, uh, to expand his views and, and tell me what's gonna work in California on these uh, maybe on more onshore type breaks and everything. Starting with Flywave, my impressions uh, on that board really came to life when I first wrote it. I had asked for more mobility in my standard down the line wave board and the first time I rode the Flywave 75 I remember it really well. I was on a 5.1 black tip. It was pretty marginal actually, and I was moving right away. The mobility was the first thing I noticed, and that was uh, a really a great sense of relief to me to be uh, that mobile on that small of a board. All of a sudden, a 75 liter board didn't really sound like a small board anymore. And the second thing was, you know, when I got on my first wave, okay, I'm gonna push a really late bottom turn and hit a late section. It did exactly what I asked it to do. It actually went later than late and I made a really late hit. And uh, the rest is pretty much history. My level of sailing on that board has really increased, uh, not only due to the mobility, but uh, actually the precision and the decisiveness of the board itself. It's been a real plus. I might've been a little nervous about it not being turny enough with four fins, trust me. It's loose enough. It'll do whatever you ask it to. It's a great board. So the, the, for the Quantum, we wanted something that really performs in, in, in sort of the worst conditions you can imagine. Bad wind, bad wind direction, maybe slow wave, no, or, or actually super windy and small wave, which is also quite common. And uh, we used Kai's expertise from the California sailing and, and his uh, traveling. To, to, uh, to really get that sort of board and it's, it's uh, more effective in terms of size so you, you don't have to go up in size so much to get a super effective board which in the end means that um, uh, you get better turning from it also so the trend has been a little bit to go to bigger and bigger boards just to get planing but this is something you don't need with these boards they, are just, they will just fly Quantum has been a real revelation as well again in terms of the efficiency that that board has I've been amazed at how much faster I'm sailing than everybody. I'm just passing people as if they're standing still and getting, you know, two, three back loops on the way out, that kind of thing. It's been a lot of fun. That, uh, that Quantum is a flatter rocker board, hasn't limited it really as a wave riding board. I found that some of those easterly days at Hokipa when you get some of a more of a side onshore angle, it's actually been pretty effective. I would mostly ride a board like Quantum on the west coast of California but wouldn't hesitate as well to ride it in uh, locations that had challenging down the line if it was the right angle. With the popularity and emphasis on freestyle waveboards in this market, we here at Simmer definitely felt it was necessary for us to offer our version. And we've done so, but we've offered a bit of a twist in that we're gonna offer multiple fin option on it. The Simmer Freestyle Wave will either be a single fin or a tri-fin depending on where you're sailing and what you want to do with the board. Point being that we will offer something more of a wave board angle to this board than most traditional freestyle wave boards offer. With the three fin option, you'll find that this freestyle wave board is going to be a lot looser than a traditional single fin. However, as a single fin, 
the board will be just as mobile as any other freestyle waveboard on the market. So it's up to you to mold this board to your needs. Basically, we're offering you the options. If you see that there's little waves out there, throw it in as a tri-fin. So we looked, uh, the last board in the lineup is the freestyle wave. And we looked at the market, freestyle wave market, and there are so many great boards in there. I've ridden most of them, maybe. And um, we wanted to do something a little bit different. So, of course, we, with the freestyle wave, you need that speed, get up and go, and everything that defines it. And many people really buy the board to, to pretty much go back and forth on these boards. So we have a, a quite a fast tailed board here, uh, which will power up perfectly with a, with a big single fin or a small single fin too, for that matter. It's effective, it's gonna, gonna go upwind really well and be easy to sail. But we also have a, a thruster option in it. And this is not something we, uh, an afterthought, which came uh, when we had decided uh, to, when we had decided the shape for the single. But actually, we uh, we thought about this from the start. So the board is is designed to have this uh, Jekyll and Hyde nature. Uh, the rocker is designed to go sp uh, really well with this thruster setup. Also. It, it has to do with the fine details of how you plant the, the rail when you when when you have the thrusters, but it's it's a little bit more curve up front and straighter in the back, which is with what will allow you to sail faster in, as a single fin. But then with the curve up front, you will get better turning with the thruster setup.